with. And sure enough, someone we didn't expect is coming out. A Greninja. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that was that was definitely not on the list of uh, characters I expected from uh, TBN there. But certainly coming out, I mean, like, hey, you, if you don't want to go lock in with the, the Palutena, Greninja is certainly a good character to lock in with instead. I'm beginning to think that TBN isn't necessarily a Palutena main. TBN just plays Smash Bros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. So, I mean, okay, we lock in with this Greninja, see what it could do here. I mean, this is kind of, I think, like, probably good for both players here, honestly. Because, you know, again, with that with that Ditto, like, no one's really comfortable with it. And I feel like if, sort of, Team N is now locking this Greninja, I mean, that's something that Echo might not have prepared for as well. And certainly yeah. looks to be doing a good job here, keeping this game fairly even. Also, we were talking about that 2019 meta, a character who has fallen off pretty hard. You may not have a lot of recent experience in general against Greninja, let alone against TBN's Greninja. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, you know, sort of definitely could be that sort of unfamiliarity. I mean, obviously Greninja as a character is so hard to hit as well. Like, that's a very slippery, fast character. And I mean, already Echo, I mean, like, you can see that he's trying to get something going here. But TBN is just all over the place all the time, just weaving back and forth. And he's making it very difficult for Echo to get something going here. Kind of needs to keep up, like, this stage pressure here. You can see there just literally weaving back, you know, holding shield, waiting to see if TBN would go into his loving hands there for a back throw. But just not going to do it. And instead going to jump over the exposed flame there and get the back air to take that stock away. Now, I did take a quick check. And Echo is seated to be the one to win this. But, hey... Yeah. This could go either way, and clearly you can see that's the case because TBN got that first stock. This is where you start to get to play your game, forcing your opponent to match your game pace because you have that stock lead. Exactly that. I mean, this is now, you know, literally TBN could have just played so safely, but, you know, Echo is going to put a stop to that right now. Land that back air there. It's so safe. It's so strong. Going to take it right away and now give Echo opportunity here. I love the patience as well. Waiting for the roll in on the platform. Going to land into a series of up airs. Get all that damage going. Yeah, big reward for that patience. Echo starting to wake up a little bit. Maybe starting to recognize the way TBN is playing. You know, that first stock, sometimes it's a bit of a feeling at your opponent. Even the first game, I think of, you know, MK Leo back when he was number one. Famous for he dropped the first game and then you just have to hold that three stock. Literally, I mean, you, you, you do have to. And already, I mean, like, Echo is just literally taking a, you know, a bit of a bruising here from this Greninja who is just all over. And it's it's really interesting as well because, like, doing a quick check, Echo and TBN do have a bit of a set record with each other, Ooh. which has always fallen in the favor of Echo apart from one set. Literally a sort of a, you know, good sort of few months ago, yeah. But they played five months ago and TBN has always locked in that Palutena. Literally all six sets, it's always been that Palutena ditto. Uh, well, at least so Palutena on sense. TBN's side. So Sally the Greninja is making an awful lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a totally valid thing. I've seen people, they'll pick up a character solely to play against one other person, not even for a matchup. Just a, a player-specific matchup. And it can it's amazing how we're at a point in this game where that can be all the difference for a player's bracket runs. You see that? I mean, this this seems already that, like, Echo is getting a little bit overwhelmed by this Slippery Fog here. And TBN is looking sort of fairly comfortable. Obviously, it's still an even game here. Echo landing up border into dash tag, getting a bit more going, keeping things nice and back and forth. But even there, just diving under the neutral air, just getting that dash tag instead... Echo got to try and find something here, but both players are literally just trading back and forth. Yeah, this has been so back and forth. And it's for that crucial counter pick advantage for the rest of the set. Game one, look, you may be a player who has to adapt later in a set, but if you do that, you can lose out on a lot of potential advantage. So Echo, if you are one of those adaptation players you got to be really careful about tbn potentially taking this first game as the forward air is well di'd and not quite enough okay this is now a huge Ooh. moment here for tbn now as he does land that up there takes that stock away and suddenly this game one going in the favor of tbn here yeah just gets caught out that's all it takes Greninja, sometimes he struggles a little bit to kill because he has to find very specific things. But when he does get his hits, that up tilt into up air or the nares into forward airs, whatever it's going to be, 
You just blow up sometimes. The knockback's crazy. And there's the counter pick war. Diddy Kong is out to play. This is where it begins now. Obviously, Echo's gone down a game and said, okay, I don't think Palutena can handle this fog right now. So we're going to switch to the other character and see what TBN can do about this. And of course, the interesting thing here in Lentini is that this is the first game that TBN has taken off Echo in nearly two years. The last that time that TBN was able to do this was literally at a tournament in June of 2022. Since then, it's been a 3-0. Oh. oh, no, I tell a lie. There was a 2-0 win from TBN. Never mind. Ignore that. It sounded like a good narrative until I realized. <laughs> hey, anyway, either way, big. just having, having that one game, that reminder of, oh, I can do this. And not only that, you just made Echo change characters. Something about the way TBN won that got Echo so rattled, so unconfident in the Palatina that has carried this matchup, this player matchup, for all these years to switch to Diddy Kong. I mean, this is this is interesting because, like, again, now that the counter war, uh, counter pick wars can begin, because of course, if this Greninja does work out against Diddy Kong, well, TBN could just switch to the Palatina himself. He, you know, he can literally just go back and forth, exactly. but now it's it's so interesting to see how this could all play out. But even despite that, Disco Ninja is holding up very, very well against the Diddy Kong here. You gotta be careful, though. Ooh! Speaking of being careful, that offstage shenanigans, Diddy Kong can be kind of exploitable, especially when you got those shurikens that we saw TBN trying to use there. Goes for the ledge trump, but the instant get it from Echo, up tilt, also gonna whip. They are scrambling for this stock right now. And then it's just the up tilt to take it away. Obviously, it's a quick move, and then does its job very, very well, because like if even something like a back end, like another one, could just be the thing to take away the stock from Echo here. You can see TBN is certainly searching for it and is able to do the job there without even taking a lick of damage, Lentini. Yeah, just that little bit of Marthritis can catch you out sometimes. But like you said, able to do it without a lick of damage. Not giving Echo the opportunity to start to walk away with that teacher's pet extra credit. Only 5%, but look how that's going to start converting once you get that advantage state. But no, misspaced the dash grab. Accidentally crossed him up. I love as well that in kind of that process, T-Bear was able to grab the banana as well, just to, you know, keep it as, you know, away from Echo, which then, and he could get a bit more damage going. He's been doing this so often throughout this game as well, just like he's playing around it so, so nicely. Especially as that banana, it could be the key thing to keep Greninja away at this point. Obviously, a character that really wants to rush down and get combo strings going, and banana could just interrupt that entirely. Another misspaced grab, this time from Echo. The way that that spacing, the tiny little precise micro dashes and dash grab spacings, it goes so far when you're this evenly matched with your opponent. This time is able to find that spacing because TBN was a little bit off the mark and able to get the stock for it. Okay, suddenly Echo looking pretty comfortable in this game two here. The Fog getting a little bit overwhelmed here as, of course, Echo's prowess with Diddy Kong is coming out in full force. TBN just trying to forward smash there, get anything going. Needs to take the stock away, but Echo's just not allowing it to happen. These falling neutralers as well, going to just combo into each other. And this is starting to rack up, but you, you got to close this out, TBN. Looked so confident against the Diddy Kong in the first stock. It kind of feels like maybe... Starting to get a little antsy, starting to hold forward. Maybe Echo also warming up a little bit, dropping those spacings a bit less. But at 112, this is prime kill percent for Greninja, but he has to find it. That was a risky nair, and you're paying for it. The patience of Echo as well there at the end, like just waiting out to see what TBN would do to recover back. And then at the end as well, just following along, up smashing, taking away game two. Now... Do we see the switch to the Palutena on TBN's side? This I want to see wondering. this counterpick war keep going. TBN, give it to me. Give me that Palutena. And it's looking like we're hovering. We are hovering Whoa. over the Palutena. I think we are going to get it. There we the go. Counter war, uh, counterpick wars have begun, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we are waiting to see. The Palutena, the main, has been locked in from TBN. We're not messing around with the Greninja anymore. So we'll have to see what it could do against this Diddy Kong. In the past, it's been pretty strong against Echo. 
but will it be good enough this time? We'll have to see. And we saw him hovering for a second, too. He wasn't 100% confident in this pick. Though the way this initial 66% uh, is going, maybe feeling a little bit more confident now. Waiting for this moment to get back, you know, to lock in that Palutena. Say, like, okay, yeah, it's time for the main. Like, we're no longer messing around with the Greninja. And as you say, like, he is looking very, very comfortable here. But it only takes a moment for Echo to get something going there. Of course, just playing with the, the you know, Jetta or the Banana to, you know, dance around TBN Shield, get a little bit of stuff going, and suddenly everything has been evened up entirely. Where we start to see how important that crucial game one is, because you don't just get stage pick advantage because we're on PS2 simulator today for whatever reason. You get that advantage in the character counter pick war. And this may be a set where whoever gets the counter pick advantage, that was a nice up smash, is able to take that game. And if you got the first game, that means you're taking the set with that logic. I just love, like, you, you said it, like, the nice up smash. That was a real nice up smash. Like, I had to take, I had to lean back in my chair a little bit for that one. Because Diddy Kong's love to sort of recover high because they can. He's a character that is able to mix up his recovery options so, so much with that side B. And then, of course, the bowels as well, giving him just any kind of angles he wants to uh, recover. So, a lot of Diddy Kongs do tend to go high. But that up smash, like, the, the very tip of it, obviously having that huge hitbox to it, it was able to still catch him anyway. And TBN now looking so damn comfortable in this game three as Echo just tries to find a stock, but is not able to do so. Yes, yeah, speaking of recoveries, of course, Diddy Kong, a character who is known for having that tricky recovery, but I'm very impressed with how TBN is recovering this game. Yeah. Even things like that quick jump from ledge explosive flame, and then the next time, okay, Echo's ready for that, I'm going to jump over him to the ledge, do a cheeky little ledge slip, then jump back up to the ledge when he tries to punish me landing, and just get out of the corner for free. I just love as well. Team it is literally sort of always reading the options there. Like we saw the the, the rollback uh, on the left side to get the grab into the back throw. It didn't work out. So obviously expecting Echo to jump, he just immediately neutralized instead to catch that jump, and get a bit more going. Team it is playing this so damn nice that you could tell that he's familiar with this Diddy Kong. He knows how to play around it. Yeah, playing around Diddy Kong is crucial, and matching and honestly having to stuff out the speed at which this character plays. Look, sometimes he's known for being a little bit slower, a little bit more campy, but when he's going in, when he's playing that approach rock, paper, scissors with you, the octane level, it starts to go up a little bit higher. Those gas pipe pump prices start to increase and you have to be ready. Is he gonna run and grab? Is he gonna monkey flip? When he monkey flips, what's the strike throw mix on that? And you have to be not only ready for all of it, but you have to you have to remember, like, what are the previous things that he's done? How does he like to go about this mix-up game? But as I talk about it, you know, sometimes you schmix yourself and go straight into the blast zone with that one. I was going to say, you could tell that, like, Echo was really just trying to sort of angle that recovery low. Uh, so, TBN gonna take that third game away, go 2-1 up here. And again, we might see that switch again. Oh, no, we... Uh, uh, are we looking in the the, the uh, what are we doing here, folks? Okay, we're, we're going Greninja. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Are we are we playing towards the best of five? TBM. What what's going on here? Like what? What's okay, going I on? think I don't know the exact rule set here, but I'm guessing that the winner has to choose their character first. I assume yeah, that's the they... case. So probably what happened was he went the Greninja because he'd rather play. Greninja Diddy Kong then yeah. locking in the Palutena and getting counterpicked. I think that might genuinely be it because I think, uh, obviously, yeah, the rule set, as far as I'm aware, let's sort of, you know, obviously the French sort of side of things can mix up sometimes different rule sets compared to the rest of the EU. But generally, it is character first. Um, and it's very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I think tbn like for the first time i've seen in a long time is playing towards that best of five because yeah he's saying that like okay if i win this game obviously i win the set great but if i we go to a game five then i actually get the character counter pick advantage because echo has to say it first and we'll have to you know choose if he's locking in that diddy kong in which case tbn just goes palatina if T echo says okay i'm gonna lock in that palatina then tbn will say okay cool i'll go greninja so this look, is very nice very smart on it too 
Yeah, this is just very, very smart. I have not seen in a long time people play towards the best of five, but TBN really just wants to take this set, and he doesn't care how many games he has to drop to do it. That's the way to play. All that matters, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning is winning. Shout out my man Vin Diesel for that one. <laughs> I don't know if this man watches Fast and Furious, but I'll tell you one thing. The way he is playing with this Greninja, it's looking pretty fast. It's looking pretty furious, but Echo managing to stay in the set. This is yeah. the start. You have to win this game. I feel like the, the, the actually furious one here is honestly Echo, like you know, going down this far, like it's, you know, being put into a really tough position. Of course, you know, still looking comfortable in this game and showing again that this Diddy Kong is more than enough to handle Greninja, but it's what comes next is what I think everyone is interested in. Because we'll have to see if TBA can get it because Echo right now is looking pretty comfortable against the fog here. Oh, that was so unfortunate for Echo. He was getting a little confident with those ledge slips. We saw the previous time he approached. That was a nice down air, though. Able to stay with it. He tried to approach using that mix-up of ledge slipping with the monkey flip, but unfortunately missed it and gave TBN a free advantage state. This is now... You know, it's, as, even with these openings, though, of course, Echo still holding such a strong lead here. I think, honestly... This Greninja is just getting a little bit packed up by Diddy Kong here. Still not able to find the stock just yet. Of course, TBN still just searching for any kind of way, but Echo is really not slowing down. We could be on the verge of a free stock here. Let's get the oh, banana no. into the down air, into the up air. We can see what followers okay. get. No, nothing yet. TBN just going to make some recovery, find the forwarder, and take that stock away finally. But he took a lot of damage. That entire 78%, the whole reason that even happened was because of a tiny misplay as Echo closes that out with a JB3, where TBN was getting a little bit antsy, really wanted that banana that had fallen from the heavens, and unfortunately, air dodged out off stage, gave Echo full reign of the stage, and as soon as you do that up against this player, he's going to take it all the way to the bank, and my goodness, did he. Oh, it, we are doing it. We are doing it, folks. The Echo has locked in the Palatina right now. Switch off that Diddy Kong, recognizing what TBN wants to do here, what the game plan was. So, of course, TBN himself is saying, okay, then I stick with the Greninja. We are not We got that music it. counter pick, though. I see it oh, coming yeah. out. Maybe that's what he needs. This is a really big moment here. See if TBN's plan works out or if Echo has got enough knowledge of this Greninja to figure out how to win it as Palutena. He did drop the game before and it was the Diddy Kongs that, you know, the two games of Diddy Kong that was able to take it and keep the set alive. But obviously the Greninja is what took out the Palutena earlier. This is not something Echo was familiar with uh, as, as well. Let's see yeah, what happens. Echo, this is exciting. Echo did what he needed to do, right? He got himself to game five. You play this one step at a time. Now... Now he can worry about how do I make up for lost time? How do I deal with this? We are going Palutena versus Greninja. Gonna be an exciting one. This is really, really so I'm curious. I'm nervous for TBN as well. Like he's really kind of bet everything on this game five here. You can tell that obviously like the game four was kind of him. So sort I'm of not necessarily writing off, you know, the game. But certainly sort of saying like, okay, yeah, well, I'm kind of playing like expecting to lose. But obviously you are still face yeah. off against Echo's main here. And that was, a, it was a scary time before. We'll have to see if Tibia has got it in him again to take that game away. And part of the playing for the set there, of course, it's impossible to be inside TBN's mind to know how much he was doing this is... That's that game where maybe you start to use it a little bit to condition your opponent. You don't burn those little mix-ups you have. You start to get them to expect certain things so that you can really cash out on this last game. Speaking of cashing out, Echo cashing out early with that stock, catching the up air, beautifully done. This is what you need to do if you want to stay alive against this Greninja. Yeah, this is looking like such a turnaround here. TBN's plan might have fallen through here. As Echo is looking very, very comfortable in this game five here with this Palutena. And Ooh, not, such a not bad giving... situation to be in. Yeah, he's not giving him any opportunities to actually get back in this. And we saw just how much TBN wants this after that game number four. Waited. No. Oh, okay. I thought he neutral got up for a second. Thank goodness he did the jet up attack. Shout out Gimmer for teaching me that one. But at 111, this is looking really bad for TBN. 
And this has really not worked out well for TBN here. And I was worried that maybe Echo had worked out the game plan. Because, of course, the character that TBN has used the most in this set is that Greninja. And mm -hmm. suddenly, yeah, Echo has got a lot of games to work out the game plan against it. And he's the sort of player that really can just read other players. And suddenly, this has been a complete turnaround here. Echo, two stocks up against TBN's Greninja here. It is, certainly is not over, but the way this is looking, Echo's advantage state, it's, I'm, I'm gonna be real, the, the curtains are starting to be drawn on this set right now. Surely, TBN, you gotta close out this stock right here, but doesn't get it. Even situations like that, Echo just too slippery in this game five. He's got such a mountain to climb here. Like, even with that forward air, desperately needed to take the stock away. But just can't. Of course, Greninja, a character as we talked about before, just Ooh. so slippery. Can you know if he wants to avoid damage, he can certainly do so. But it's very, very difficult to play at such a disadvantage as this, especially when you get caught by those exposed flames. Taking a page out of TBN's book there with that off-stage explosive flame. I can see just how shaken TBN is. Went for like three or four whiffed grabs in a row. When honestly, Echo would have really had to overcommit to even get hit by them. Finally got one, but then got nothing off of it as Echo just spacing out, throw out those back airs, maybe a dash attack every once in a while, and a nair for your trouble, still alive, but barely breathing. Oh my god, this could just be a free stock here from Echo against the character that beat the Palutena earlier. Girl still hanging on by a friend here. As TBN just diving off stage, but it is the back end that's going to firmly seal up the game five there. Take it away with a free stock to seal wow. it all up. My goodness, what a dominating way to show that, yeah, okay, you have a character counter pick here. It worked out before, but it's not going to work out again. Yeah, what a statement from Echo. Like you said, the three stock. After losing that matchup game number one, it circled all the way around, all the way to game number five. We played our little rock, paper, scissors. You take one, I take one, a little tit for tat. But at the end of the day, great stuff to be able to figure out, like you said, okay, it worked last time. Why did it work? How do I adapt? What things am I getting hit by? And it gets to a point where you're just spacing out back airs, watching your opponent whip grabs over and over until you kill them three times.